Now to South Africa, where the government says it's sending some 25,000 soldiers into regions racked by looting and violence, boosting the troop deployment by tenfold. Unrest has raged in parts of the country for almost a week now in what's being called South Africa's worst violence since the end of apartheid. Ministers are pleading for people not to take justice into their own hands. What could be confused for scenes of bustling commerce are actually scenes of chaos. In the eastern city of Durban, looting, arson and riots have continued at scale. Police say they've arrested thousands of people, but many officers say the situation is still out of control. Highway of death, Gulf War, that's what it looks like down here. If you carry on further down the road, the cars burnt out, wrecked cars on the road, they've looted everything, the factories are burning, the warehouses are burning. The people are coming by their thousands to come and loot. But in other parts of the country, police appear to be regaining control. The government has deployed some 5,000 soldiers to support local law enforcement and is said to be considering sending more. Authorities are concerned, however, about reports that some civilians may be armed and taking matters into their own hands, rounding up suspected looters and resorting to a form of mob justice. Lawmakers say they don't want these groups to add fire to the already simmering situation. We understand the concern for community for their safety and the, their need to protect their properties. We would like to urge these communities to work with the law enforcement agencies to stop the looting and violence and to operate within the rule of law. Protests began last week after former President Jacob Zuma began serving a 15-month jail term for contempt of court. But frustration over inequality and rising unemployment are seen to be fueling the majority of the chaos. Now, with dozens left dead in the violence, many grieving families will be asking themselves just how long the lawlessness will last. I'm now joined by journalist Varashni Pillay in Johannesburg. Uh, Varashni, South Africa has experienced days of unrest and looting, of course. What's the situation like today? Well, the situation today is that um, people are still feeling very nervous. There's still a lot of chaos. We are seeing scenes that are reminiscent of the early days of democracy or before, rather, when there was huge, unspread, uh, widespread unrest in the country. And for many citizens, this is unheard of and unseen. Previous uh, riots and protests have been very limited. For it to have spread this much is terrifying for many citizens. So right now, what it looks like in South Africa and in provinces like mine, which is affected, is that most of us are barricaded in our homes. We can't get, you know, we run out of petrol. We, um, bread is this, the shortages of bread. And there's a lot of supplies that have been disrupted because of, what, of the violence that is happening in KwaZulu Natal where it started. There have been concerns that food and fuel may be in short supply in some areas due to transportation disruptions. Any indication of that happening? Well, absolutely. Um, so the port city of Durban, which is where the unrest really started, is really central to our supply chains in the country. And so supplies have been really disrupted up to the economic heartland of Gauteng, where the, where the protests have also spread to. So we actually can't, um, there are queues around the block for fuel. Um, there isn't as I said before, there isn't bread available. There are bread shortages because the, the main yeast factory in the country has been has been affected by the violence again in KwaZulu Natal, which is that port uh, that port area. So because of that, because it is a really key area in terms of um, getting exports from outside the country, from delivering them to the rest of the country, we're seeing shortages starting to happen. I'm curious, what are people saying there about the government's response to the unrest? Are they satisfied with what President Cyril Ramaphosa is doing? Um, absolutely not. Uh, there's a lot of frustration. Um, social media itself is a tinderbox of emotions. And South Africans generally are, I would say, shocked that nothing more has been done. There is a lot of uh, unhappiness with the fact that this seems to be handled with kid gloves because it's a it started as a political issue, because it started off uh, around former President Jacob Zuma and people aligned to him. It does seem that 
the necessary force wasn't used, that the necessary tools of the state were not deployed fast enough or soon enough. In fact, there is a huge criticism of our intelligence services, not just on Ramaphosa, but because the intelligence services were hollowed out by years of corruption under former President Jacob Zuma. So an intelligence service in a country is supposed to see this coming. These people planned quite openly on social media. They said they were going to make the country ungovernable, and yet nothing happened to stop them. That's that's a journalist of Varashni Pillay in Johannesburg. Uh, much thanks, Varashni. And now the army has been called in to protect businesses in South Africa after several days of riots. Over 1,300 people have been arrested and at least 72 have died in unrest since the jailing of former President Jacob Zuma for contempt of court. Violence and destruction on the streets of Johannesburg, the economic capital of South Africa. This shopkeeper is just one of thousands of petrified business owners caught up in the looting and vandalism now spreading across the country. What initially started as a protest against the incarceration of former President Jacob Zuma for contempt of court has mushroomed into nationwide unrest. Yes, we have a lot of poverty and people uh, did grab the food that they needed. But we've now gone further than that, where we've seen over 200 shopping centers uh, destroyed. We're seeing a lot of uh, businesses going out of business. We're seeing a lot of fear. And this is going to take years to come back uh, uh, and, and fix itself. So the poverty and the inequality in South Africa is going to get worse before it even has a chance to get better. The South African National Defense Force has now been deployed by the government for only the fourth time in three decades. To re-establish law and order as businesses are plundered by angry mobs that outnumber the country's police. For business owners, the help can't come soon enough. With the majority of those in affected areas too scared to reopen for trade.